Hi guys, let's continue looking at some key micro and macro effect topic areas. This time we're going to mix it up. We're going to look at two clear micro topic areas and two clear macro topic areas, but still get micro and macro effects for all of them. Let's start by looking at the minimum wage, micro and macro effects there. Let's start with the micro effects, seems like the logical place to start. We can talk about how a minimum wage can deal with income inequality as a market failure and thus promote equity clear micro effect. We can talk about the potential higher prices and therefore lower consumer surplus uh, of the impact of a minimum wage, the impact on producer revenue and profit, especially if they absorb the higher costs of production as producers. We can talk about the individual impact. So if individual workers are losing their jobs, if they're being replaced by capital machinery, the impact on individuals, their living standards, their family outcomes. But what about the macro effects of a minimum wage? Well, we can talk about job losses, right? Your diagram of real wage unemployment gives you that. We can generalize and say higher unemployment in the economy. We can talk about higher cost push inflation. If wages are being driven up, we can talk about the impact on competitiveness, worsening competitiveness, the supply side cause of a current account deficit. We can also talk about the impact on government finances. So if a government is a major employer of minimum wage workers, it's going to worsen government finances. Whereas if they're not a major employer of minimum wage workers, the private sector is, then actually they can get a tax revenue benefit. What about unemployment, micro and macro effects there? Well, it seems logical to go to the macro effects first of high unemployment. We can talk about lost output on a PPF diagram. The economy is going to be operating inside and therefore we get lost output, lost production of goods and services. With the impact on government finances, yeah, governments have to spend more on welfare benefits. They have to spend more on dealing with the issues of unemployment, especially the social costs of unemployment and also they're not receiving as much tax revenue because of high unemployment. Hysteresis, the impact on AD and long term the impact on LRAS because of high unemployment. The lower inflation, go to your Phillips curve there, right? When we get high un unemployment, we get low inflation as well. The impact on the current account, there is higher unemployment and lower incomes, less spending on imports, potential benefits to the current account. So easy to get your macro effects of unemployment. What about your micro effects though? Well, we can go to the social costs of unemployment, high unemployment driving up crime, linking to depression and anxiety, linking to divorce rates and how that puts pressure on key public services like the courts, like police services, like health services to deal with these social costs. We can talk about how firms benefit from a higher pool of workers to pick from. If they can pick better workers, that can drive productivity gains and lower costs for them. We can talk about the individual issues of unemployment. If people are losing their jobs, we can talk about lost incomes, we can talk about the impact on family outcomes. And we can also link high unemployment to the worsening of market failures, especially if people are turning to drugs, if they're turning to alcohol, worsening of negative externality related market failures there. So simple stuff, guys. Let's Let's keep going. So the micro and macro effects of nationalization. Let's go to micro effects first. We can talk about how nationalization might be solving a market failure in the form of monopoly power. So now if we deal with that monopoly power, we get allocatively efficient outcomes. We can then talk about the lower prices, the higher quantity, the better choice that consumers have in this kind of market. Why? Because the state in theory has an objective of maximizing social welfare and therefore we're going to get these benefits, these allocatively efficient outcomes. You could talk about how one dominant state run firm could benefit from greater economies of scale, especially if it's a natural monopoly market. And we could talk about how the state is not a profit maximizing employer and therefore might focus more on training workers, boosting productivity, improving skills of workers. What about the macro effects? Well, we can talk about the hit to government finances, the cost of running these public services or whatever that state run company might be, and link that to budget deficit, worsening national debt rising. We can talk about greater employment. Remember that we just said it, the state is not a profit maximizing employer and therefore may well employ more workers than in a privatized industry. We can talk about the potential inefficiencies of a nationalized firm because they're not profit motivated. There might actually be higher prices. We can link that to higher inflation if we see nationalization across a large number of industries in the economy. Uh, we can also talk about the lack of dynamic efficiency again because these firms are not going to be profit motivated and therefore may hold back on reinvestment, dynamic efficiency, and thus restrain long-term economic growth and LRAS increases over time. What about market-based development policies, the micro and macro effects of those? Well, let's go to the macro effects first. If we think of some of these policies like 
trade liberalization, like promoting FDI, like tax cuts, like privatization, deregulation. A lot of these policies will boost economic growth, whether AD or LRS, and from there we can go to higher incomes, better living standards, both material and non-material living standards. We can talk about poverty alleviation, absolutely. Linked to higher economic growth, we can talk about job creation, labor is a derived demand that's driving down unemployment. We can talk about greater tax revenue collection. Again, you can link that to higher economic growth or directly you can link it to higher FDI. So if there is more economic growth, you can talk about higher income tax revenue, higher corporation tax revenue, higher VAT revenue, higher tariff revenues, link that to the government fiscal position. But also we could be concerned about income inequalities, depending on where this growth has come from, depending on the type of market-based supply side policies used, there could be widening of income inequality and thus linked to that as a worsening of a government macro objective. What are some of the micro effects though of market-based development policies? Well, we could talk about the gains of allocative efficiency. We can talk about how a lot of these policies now can boost competition and if that is true, we get allocatively efficient outcomes. That's great because it means lower prices, it means higher consumer surplus, higher quantity, higher quality, higher choice. Very good for affordability, very good for development, especially for those on lower incomes, those in poverty. So definite micro effects right there. We can talk about higher profits, again through market-based um, supply side policies in the terms of competition policies, privatization, deregulation, but also trade liberalization. Again, that can promote higher profits of firms. FDI coming in, these firms making high profits. We can then talk about dynamic efficiency. The investment of that is that uh, going to boost productivity if it's a new technology and better capital? Is it going to be more green production if the investment is in renewable sources? Um, a more green capital, for example. We can talk though also about worsening of market failures. So we could talk about privatization, deregulation, and potential market failures, environmental market failures linked to those uh, policies. We can also talk about how uh, bolstering trade can lead to environmental issues and market failures. We can link to income inequality as a market failure. So plenty of places to go depending on the policies to give a market failures as well. We can also talk about how if we go very market-based, we might leave behind things like infrastructure, we know our public goods might not be provided if we go too heavy on the market-based side. Education and healthcare, where there are positive externalities, will be underprovided if left to market-based development policies on their own. So plenty of places to go for market failures as individual micro effects. Remember, each market failure is itself a micro effect, right? So you've got plenty of different micro effects if you dig down into the market failures. So that covers it, guys. Again, very simple, the micro and macro effects. Stay tuned to the next video, though, where we're gonna be changing tack a little bit. And instead of just looking at micro and macro effects, we're gonna look at topic areas where you might be asked about micro and macro causes, micro and macro influences, micro and macro factors, slightly different style of micro and macro question, but just as important. So stay tuned for that video. We're gonna smash it there too. See you then. Thank mm -hmm. you.